Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving chemistry and biochemistry as they relate to biology. In this video, I will be introducing biochemistry, describing what organic molecules and functional groups are, as well as describing some of the different classifications of molecules. The picture provided above is of a biomolecule, an organic molecule, a monomer. You should understand what all of these things mean by the end of this video. The term organic can have some different meanings in different contexts. With foods, it might mean natural, or not genetically modified, or not treated with chemicals. To oversimplify things in a chemistry context, the term organic means that a substance contains carbon. There are over 100 elements that are present on a modern periodic table, but a disproportionate amount of attention is fixed on the element carbon. In fact, if you seek entrance to a medical school, there are really three chemistry courses that you need to take two introductory courses, and one in organic chemistry. There are many reasons that there is so much emphasis placed on the element carbon. One reason is that it's found in all biomolecules, or molecules that are essential to all living things. In fact, the prefix bio means life. Carbohydrates, or sugars, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids, or fats, are some of the major classifications of biomolecules. Another reason is that carbon can form up to four strong covalent bonds with other elements. This allows it to produce an incredible number of different molecules in the form of chains, rings, or branched molecules. These different forms that carbon can produce are provided in the picture on the bottom of this slide. On the left is a straight or linear chain. In the middle is an example of a branch structure. And on the right, you can see what a ring formed out of carbon would look like. Within molecules, there are commonly formed clumps of atoms that are referred to as functional groups. These functional groups contain different elements, come in different sizes, and are arranged in particular ways. Some common functional groups are shown in the diagram to the right. Functional groups influence many properties of molecules, and identification of them can be very helpful. This will be elaborated in the next few slides. On the previous slide, it was mentioned that functional groups affect the properties of molecules, and this is described in the chart found below. Everything from polarity to whether or not something forms hydrogen bonds, if something dissolves in water, and whether it forms an acid or a base can be determined by some functional groups. The second reason it might be important to identify different functional groups is in the identification of biomolecules. The molecule shown on this slide contains two functional groups that we will discuss shortly, an amino group and a carboxylic acid group. With that knowledge, you could quite easily identify this later as an amino acid. There are four different functional groups that we will be emphasizing throughout the year that I expect that you'd be able to identify, and those are amino groups, carboxylic acid groups, phosphate groups, and alcohol groups. An amino, or amine group, consists of one nitrogen atom bonded to two hydrogen atoms. We will discuss amino groups soon, as they are one of three important components to an amino acid. The general form for an amino group is provided here, boxed in red. Carboxylic acid, or acid, or carboxyl groups all refer to the cluster of atoms that are exhibited on the right-hand side of this picture. They consist of one carbon atom, two oxygen atoms, and a hydrogen atom, where one of the oxygen atoms is double bonded to the carbon. Like the amino groups, carboxylic acid groups are found in amino acids. The amino acid serine is exhibited here. Phosphate groups consist of a phosphorus atom bonded to four oxygen atoms. Three phosphate groups are shown here in the important in cell energy molecule, ATP. Phosphate groups are also found in nucleic acids, which we will discuss later. Alcohol groups consist of an oxygen atom bonded to a hydrogen atom, as highlighted here. This molecule is ethanol, found in alcoholic beverages and gasoline throughout Iowa, a product of fermentation, a process that we'll talk about later this year. The last thing we'll talk about in this video are different classifications of molecules based upon their size. Smallest of these are monomers. The prefix mono means one. Other contexts you might be familiar with this prefix include monogamy, where you would have one marriage partner, or monotheism, which is the belief in one god. Monomers are the small units, Lego building blocks if you will, that build larger molecules. The graphic below shows many monomers, each of which are shown in a different color. Polymers are larger molecules that are made up of many monomers. The prefix poly means many. Other contexts that you might be familiar with include polygamy, having multiple marriage partners, or polytheism, the belief in many gods. 
All of the monomers in the graphic below would be bonded together covalently to form a polymer. Finally, there are some molecules that are tremendous in size, referred to as macromolecules. The prefix macro means gigantic, often referring to things that are so big that they are observable to the naked eye, unlike microscopic things that would require use of a microscope. Macromolecules often contain thousands or even millions of monomers stuck end to end. That is the end of this video overviewing organic molecules and functional groups. If you are interested in learning about other chemistry and biochemistry concepts as they relate to biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.